Hey, it's John Lee Dumas of EO Fire, and it's The Entrepreneurial You, the show for dedicated and passionate Caribbean entrepreneurs seeking daily inspiration, brought to you by author, speaker, and award-winning entrepreneur, Henneka Wakis porter You must be prepared to ignite. Coming up. On this episode of The Entrepreneurial You, what so often happens to us is that we get on this path and we're passionate and we work, 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 and there's no balance and we're not taking care of ourselves. So it's really about mindfulness and making lifestyle choices. Hi, my peak performer. I am Henneka Watkins, Porto, host of The Entrepreneurial You podcast. Today's episode is brought to you by Bookophilia. Jamaica Stock Exchange and Patwa Apparel. And now, let's go to today's episode. Today's guest on The Entrepreneurial You has a PhD in reinventing herself and is a serial entrepreneur. Over the last 15 years, her focus has been devoted to the field of health and wellness. Today, she is a successful personal development coach, motivational speaker, and is an internationally known expert on helping clients overcome chronic stress fear, and anxiety. She is co-author of The Change, Insights into Self-Empowerment, one of the fastest growing personal development book series in the world with Tony Robbins' former mentor, Jim Britt, and others. She has a best-selling book, Escape from Anxiety, Supercharge Your Life with Powerful Strategies from A to Z. She's just published Embodying the Power of the Zero Stress Zone, a compilation of the teachings of the world-renowned spiritual master, Yogi Amrit Desai. I'm super excited to start and have a conversation with Peggy Silphon. Welcome, Peggy, to The Entrepreneurial You. Thank you so much, Henneke. I am really excited to be here. I love what you're doing, and I love being able to support and spread information that can help people. So thank you for inviting me. Here's a fun question for you. If you could go back in time, with whom would you like to spend the day? (laughs) That is a great question. I would love to spend a day with Albert Einstein. I think the combination of science and spirituality that comes out of his works is so expansive. And I I think he gets to so many truths that we're missing in our world today that we need to really look back and reflect on. Great. Thank you for sharing that. <laughs> All right. So before we get into the thick of things, talking about, you know, relieving stress, anxiety, and fear, which we all need to do. Before we get into that, I'm going to ask you, Peggy, to share with our community of peak performers your Twitter handle or whatever social media platform that you're most prevalent on. Probably Facebook would be the most, and it's just Peggy Sealfan dot personal development coach. Awesome. And of course, my peak performers, you know that you can reach me on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter, Henneka Watke Sporta or Patwa Apparel if you're looking for my t shirt. So, Peggy, let's get ready to rock and roll. <laughs> All right. Yes. Yeah, so, we're going to be talking today, as I alluded to earlier, eliminating stress, fear, and anxiety, and especially when it gets to, well, even before it gets to that chronic stage, we want to eliminate it, right? But we want, I want to know from you, how did you go from journalism and owning a business to becoming a wellness expert? Let's take it from there. That's a great question. And basically, I believe out of adversity, we grow and learn the most. So I was dealing with a lot of stress and anxiety in my life. I started out as a journalist in New York City, deadlines, pressures, and living in New York City is pretty harrowing. And I used to ride a motorcycle around New York, so I made it even more harrowing for myself. (laughs) So over time, I found that my stress and my anxiety was crippling me physically and psychologically. I was getting sick. I would have a motorcycle cycle accident, things just kept happening. And I thought, well, it's just my lot in life. This is my cycle. I have these great productive highs and then I crash and burn. And I always had the entrepreneurial spirit, which is you really want to produce and be productive. But then when I would crash and burn, I'd be depressed. I'd have the flu. I, you know, all sorts of terrible things would happen. So through that, I began training in 
a lot of different modalities that I found gave me relief. And it was everything from ancient yogic techniques to modern psychology, neuro-linguistic programming, and now more recently functional medicine, nutrition, and also the neurosciences. So I have quite a range. And at the end of the day, what I found is they all work. It's just finding what works for you in your life. How can someone reinvent themselves as you did? (laughs) That is an enormous question. It really takes a lot of commitment, a lot of focus, a lot of energy, and a lot of passion. And that's really where it needs to start. If you're passionate about what you're doing, you never work a day in your life. And when you hit the downturns, which is inevitable, it's part of our humanness, it's just part of life. If you're not in that place of passion and commitment, it's impossible. You'll self-destruct. You, you, you'll doubt yourself. You'll feel insecure. You'll feel that you're just not enough. You're not smart enough or making enough money. All of those things will enter in. So it's really having the passion, beginning with that, and then making the commitment so that you can stay on that path to fulfillment. And it takes some vigilance and it takes focus. You were loving what you're doing at at one point. So when that passion turns into something that causes you to feel burnt out or to start feeling stressed out, what's next? Great question again. And, it, you know, that's really true. What so often happens to us is that we get on this path and we're passionate and we work, 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 and there's no balance and we're not taking care of ourselves. So it's really about mindfulness and making lifestyle choices, not just working. It's really about balancing real life with work and being able to incorporate all these different elements that allow us to really optimize every aspect of ourselves. I call it an integrated life. And I actually do an integrated life coaching system because it's really about bringing mind and body in in alignment in a way that allows us to be the most productive and the most connected to everything that we are. You mentioned mindfulness a while ago, and I just want you to give a little clarity. What is mindfulness and and how are businesses using it to change, you know, the way employee perform and even they're increasing their level of health and, and, you know, wellness and reducing all that health costs? So often what happens in the workplace, and all of us fall prey to this, is we're absolutely focused on all the distractions rather than what the task might be at hand. And especially we women, you know, you and I know only too well that we multitask Mm -hmm. and multitasking is well, and we feel like it's an obligation. It's part of our femaleness, you know, if you will, we're nurturing everyone else. We're doing all this stuff. So we're not paying attention to ourselves. We're not being mindful. And mindfulness is really about paying attention on purpose. And how often do you walk into a room, put your keys down, and an hour later, it's, oh my gosh, where did I put my keys? I can't remember. And you spend 20 minutes looking for your keys because you weren't mindful about what you were doing. And it's hard because we're constantly being interrupted and there are so many distractions. So it takes practice. It takes training. And that's part of what I help clients do is really get on that path to be aware of their choices, to be aware of what they're doing. And by doing that, you become so much more productive. You're able to really get more done with less effort and less time. Does that make sense? Yeah, it makes all the sense. Now, what are some of the techniques that we can use to become more mindful? You know, um, I know that meditation works, but what are some of the techniques that we can use? Meditation is great. One of the other things I recommend, especially to business leaders is this concept of taking a break, not just a coffee break, but just taking a time out. And just the way our biology functions, it's really helpful to take, a I call it a productivity pause every 90 minutes to just step away from your desk, step away from whatever task you're doing, no matter what your deadline is. If you just take a minute, two minutes to step back, stretch, breathe, sigh, just, you know, dance around your office, 
stand up, move your body so the energy is more activated and flowing. And what that does is it it takes the tension away from whatever it is you were focused on, and it allows you to function at a much higher level. So you can do that in a minute, two minutes. You can spend five minutes, 10 minutes, just getting moving and breathing can make a big difference. Meditation is another step that can take you even deeper. And I train a lot of people in how to do a very simple meditation. So you just kind of take this, just pause to go inside and to just give yourself permission not to think for a minute, 30 seconds. I tell people, try to drop into the gaps between your thoughts without struggling or stressing about it, just experimenting with it like an adventure. I wanted to touch a little more on the health costs that are associated with with stress and just going on and on. What are some of the, the health costs that are associated and costs not just to your individual health, but costs to your businesses as well? It is enormous. And so many entrepreneurs aren't paying attention to what they're doing to their staff. If you don't set the right example by taking time for yourself, by really having balance in your life, then you're expecting your staff to run at the same level you are, and eventually you will burn out. What happens with stress and anxiety is we have basically this tension level where we're releasing hormones. Uh, It's a stress response, the fight or flight. And these hormones are activating our adrenaline, all our, uh, our heart starts beating faster and our breathing gets quicker and shorter and all of the energies go into our extremities so that we can fight the predator or run away, right? And this is sort of our primal survival instinct. Well, it was only meant for short bursts, but what we entrepreneurs tend to do is we get focused on a project and we can't let it go and we're tenacious about it. And so then we're in that tension producing level for way too long a period because what happens when we're in that tension mode is all the energies are being siphoned away from non-essential functions, from things like our digestion. How many people get acid reflux and digestion symptoms, headaches? It's all because of stress. And it also compromises the immune system because, you know, when you look at just our biology, let's face it, if you've just... uh, eaten a whatever, a donut or, you know, something healthier like a bowl of fruit and you're suddenly being chased by a ferocious tiger, who cares if you digest that or not? So the digestion goes on hold while you deal with the danger. The problem is so much of our dangers are self-inflicted now. And that's why I go back to what I mentioned before and taking these breaks. It is just so important to factor it into our schedules. And now with our smartphones, it's easy to do. Just get a little reminder every 90 minutes, every couple of hours. Just take a minute, take two minutes to push away from whatever you're doing and refocus. You know, you mentioned something earlier. As entrepreneurs, sometimes we expect our employees to be functioning on the same level as us. It just dawned on me as you said that, that when I just started my business, I was just so passionate about it and so driven. And looking back, I can't imagine how many employees I would have had to let go for the simple reason that I didn't believe that they were performing enough and performing at the level that I was performing at. And I'm just looking and listening to you now. I'm saying, oh my gosh, that wasn't fair because, you know, it's my passion. It's my baby. There is no way I can expect anybody to perform at the level that I was performing at. And I think that's pretty unfair of me to ask. (laughs) Although, Henneke, you know that you bring up another really good point, and that is that when you have talented employees that you're cultivating to do certain tasks that they love doing, then it's a joy for them. However, what too many employers tend to do is sort of crack the whip and don't respect the individuality of that person and what their personal needs might be. Not that you get involved in their personal business, but just respecting them as as a full human being and all that that entails. Because when we don't, what happens is our employees do not feel valued. They end up 
having high levels of illnesses, which cost our bottom line because there's a lot of absenteeism and presenteeism, and that can cost companies an awful lot of money. So it's really important that we all work together and recognize our humanness and respect that and really value one another, whether we're the boss or whether we're you know, just an entry level. We're all the same in our humanness, and it's important to respect that. We're going to take a break right here, Peggy. And when we come back, we are going to be looking at how we relieve anxiety and stress. We're going to continue our conversation on that, looking at, you know, how can we know if or anxiety is normal or it is more serious than we, we, we think it is. So let's take a break. Peak performers. Success is something that we gradually work towards as an end goal, but we need to be in the right environment to make it happen. Bookophilia is dedicated to providing a space for book, coffee and tea lovers, creatives, educators, students and professionals who want ideas, innovation and inspiration. They have a variety of high quality books, a cafe, events such as book launches, signings and art exhibitions and Professional services uniquely tailored to your needs, culture, and tastes. Their environment provides for the full literary arts experience, allowing for multifaceted creative expressions. Find them on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter at Bookophilia. Welcome back. And Peggy, we're going to now look at how can we know if our anxiety level is normal everyday anxiety or whether it is something more serious. Right. That's an excellent question. And I think a lot of people deal with that. In fact, I was just working recently with a woman who was CEO of her company. And before she came to me, every other week she was going to urgent care, sure that she was having a heart attack. And what we discovered was she was having panic attacks. And again, it, you know, when you're in that tension level, physiologically, all of these things start coming up. So when it really reaches an abnormal level is when you have over-exaggerated fears, when you just cannot do tasks and you're not functioning well in your everyday life. With so many things that are going on in our businesses and in our world, there's a lot of fear. And fear literally, according to the neurosciences, shuts down the front part of the brain, which is the place for reason, for good judgment, making decisions. So if we're caught up with anxiety and fears, we're really not functioning optimally. And that can lead to just a lot of physical, as well as mental and emotional disconnects that can be really harmful. How do you know that there's, okay, so I'm going through this right now. What do I need to do to to prevent that so that I don't continue on this path of self-destruction, as it were? So it's really about developing awareness, mindfulness, and some good lifestyle choices so that your life is more balanced. So it's basic things. You know, we really need to respect our biology and take care of ourselves. And we don't. And I know I didn't. I was go, go, go nonstop until I would crash. And it's important to really acknowledge that we need to eat properly. We need to get enough sleep. If we're really feeling fuzzy and groggy, we need to take a break and and step back from whatever it is we're doing, or if we're driving a vehicle, we're going to have an accident. And so it's really paying attention to your own biorhythms, your own functioning, and being able to feed yourself properly. So often we'll grab a bite to eat on the run on the way to the next appointment, and we're eating really unhealthy stuff. And we're eating it in a rushed environment where we can't digest it properly. We're going to burn out. We'll get adrenal fatigue, all sorts of physical uh, manifestations will occur if we don't balance it. So it's really developing all the aspects of our lives that we know, we all know this intuitively, but we 
sort of ignore it and think, oh, no, I, I don't I don't need to exercise. I, I've got too much to get done. I don't have time for that. Yes, you do. You need to move your body. And actually, one of the things I recommend uh, to not only entrepreneurs but to staff is I love, I've been using it for about six months now, standing desks because we were not made to sit. And sitting has been studied and shown to be the new smoking where more – uh, physical problems occur from sitting too much. And so when you stand, your brain functions better, less stress, less anxiety, and you can actually be more productive. Yes, that is correct. I actually find that when I stand working, I feel better than when I've been sitting for a long time. And it's something I've started to practice recently. <laughs> Great. Perfect. <laughs> and the final question I have for you is what do some of the most outrageously successful CEOs do in this quest for, you know, relieving anxiety and fear and, and just living a normal, natural, healthy life? What has been really spreading across the country like wildfire, across the world even, is meditation, is taking periods of time and some of the most successful CEOs not only do it themselves, but they've actually created uh, relaxation rooms, meditation rooms for their staff where they can go and just check out for 10 minutes, 20 minutes. And it makes a huge difference in not only the way everyone feels, but again, in the way people interrelate with one another. It's really the opportunity to connect to our source, to really connect to that place within ourselves where we are empowered. And so one of the things I'd love to offer actually is a, a free audio that can help people in just three minutes. So I've recorded an audio and your listeners can just go to three minutes to de-stress.com and download it. And I recommend using it multiple times a day. The more you use it, the more you benefit and the more that time out becomes a habit. Interesting. You know, I'm listening to you and I'm saying immediately after I'm done with you, I'm going to be using <laughs> that three minutes. <laughs> <laughs> Your final thoughts, Peggy, on, on this matter of, you know, de-stressing and relieving anxiety. Well, the final thought is really the fact that we are empowered by our very nature of who we are biologically, psychologically, emotionally. And it's just allowing ourselves to have the ability to step back and see the bigger picture and really honor and respect who we are so that we can work together and be able to be a resource for one another and be able to really build our communities and our world and our businesses in a more um, enjoyable way. It, one of the things I'd like to share is the fact that life is play and we take it too seriously. And so when you play, you are more relaxed and you really function better. So think about life as an adventure, even the challenges you learn from and you grow from and it's beneficial. So enjoy the ride. Yes, certainly. And that's our aim, you know. <laughs> Peak performers, you've been listening to Peggy Silphon. She's been talking about how it is that we de-stress and, you know, relieve anxiety and fear because we get so caught up sometimes in our everyday life. We just get busy, busy being busy. And sometimes we have to check in, see even whether we're being productive in that business, you know, in an in an effort to to just going after our goals and our visions and our dreams. We need to take some time out to introspect and to just just be, just live, just just be happy and enjoy the ride. Life is a journey. It's not a. It, it's not just you get you get up today and by tomorrow you experience everything that you want to in life no it's a process and so we need to take the time out that is necessary peggy thank you so much and before you go i want you to share again your contact details so that our community members can reach out to you again that 3 minutes to distress.com which is a numeral 3 and uh, on Facebook, I'm at Peggy Sealfon dot personal development coach, or you can visit my website at Peggy dot com. And one last website are for some of my books where I offer 
over 100 strategies on different ways to interrupt patterns of stress and fear and anxiety. And so that's at stonewaterstudio.com. And Henneke, I love what you're doing, and I really appreciate the opportunity to share with you and with your audience. So thank you so much. And thank you, too. It has been a pleasure having you on The Entrepreneur You, and I wish you all the best as you continue to inspire and motivate and do whatever it is that you're doing to help us live healthier lifestyles. And now, a word from our sponsor, Jamaica Stock Exchange. We needed to raise capital, but our experience with local financial institutions was that they were cautious and slow to act, and interest rates were far too high. We had real concerns about financing our business through outside equity investors and the possibility of interference. Could we get a fair valuation for our business? We had our own ideas about the business and its value. Should I go the traditional route of bank financing or should I try the Jamaica Stock Exchange? So we made a call and experienced transformation of our business through conversations. I'm John Mafood, CEO of Jamaican Teas, and we're listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. Give us a call today at 876-967-3271 to begin your transformation through conversation. We want to see your company listed on the Jamaica Stock Exchange. We have come to the end of another great show. Thank you so much for listening. I'd really love for you to go to iTunes, subscribe, rate, and review the podcast, The Entrepreneurial You. That's if you've not already done so. And I really look forward to hearing from you about your journey as an entrepreneur. If you've not already started and you are about to start, I'd love to hear about that. So send me an email at hennikawatkisporto at gmail.com. In the meantime, please visit hennikawatkisporto.com where you can access several resources to help you level up and peak your performance. Feel free to explore the website. There are several resources, there are blogs, there are the podcast, those past episodes that you've not yet listened to. You can also leave a comment on the show notes page of these episodes. So I look forward to interacting with you and to share your journey. Remember, you were born to win, but to be a winner, you must plan to win, prepare to win and expect to win. Walk good.